This is everything you need to know about RAM for Tarkov 1.0 in 2026. In this video, I'm testing 32 versus 64 gigs, slow versus fast DDR5, and showing you what actually matters in game if you're running an X3D CPU. With RAM prices out of control because AI companies are buying up all the available memory out there, leaving scraps for us consumers, this is about knowing what's actually worth paying for. Before we dive into the benchmarks here, the setups I used for testing, 9800X3D was run on an ASRock X870E Nova motherboard. For storage, I used an Aorus 10K Gen 5 NVMe SSD. Both RAM kits used in this test are SK Hynix ADI, and they are both dual channel. I'm running a plus 200 boost clock override and a minus 40 undervolt with a maxed out f-clock at 2200 megahertz the u-clock and m-clock are synchronized one to one if you want to see the exact tuning setup for this chip check out my tuning video there's a link in the upper right hand corner or in the video description below for in-game settings i'm using my pure 70 graphics preset it's designed to push gpu usage without fully maxing it out so we're isolating cpu and memory behavior as much as possible if you're looking to dial in your settings for your own system i've got an updated tarkov optimization guide for 2025 linked in the top right right and down in the description below. I use the most demanding route on the most demanding map in Tarkov, which is Streets of Tarkov. I ran my usual path down Klimov Street into Lexos. Keep in mind, these numbers are gonna look lower than the typical average FPS you might see in a real raid because I'm only focusing on this route. And that's intentional. So like I said, your actual raid averages will probably be higher than the numbers you're gonna see here. This route just gives us the best apples to apples CPU comparison. All right, we'll start with the capacity comparisons, 32 versus 64 gigs. Starting at 1080 offline, the difference between 32 and 64 gigs is pretty much negligible in average FPS, 128 versus 126. That's about a 1.6% difference, which is basically margin of error. The more interesting part is the lows. 1% lows barely move, but the 0.1% lows are about 3.5% better on 64 gigs, meaning it's slightly smoother and a little bit less micro stutters. At 1440 offline, that trend stays consistent. Average FPS increases to about a 2.4% lead for 64 gigs. But again, this isn't really a dramatic change in raw performance. And if you weren't told beforehand, it would be hard to tell whether you're on 32 or 64 in terms of average FPS. The 1% lows are nearly identical, and the 0.1% lows stay about 3.5% higher, reinforcing that capacity mainly improves frame time stability rather than overall throughput. Basically, resolution scaling doesn't eliminate memory impact. The benefit to capacity is subtle, but so far consistent and offline testing downplays the worst case scenarios. Even in 4K offline, where usually the GPU starts to take over a little bit, Tarkov is a different story. 64 gigs still holds an advantage. Average FPS is again up around 2.4% for 64, but the 0.1% lows jump up to almost 5%, which tells us that Tarkov's memory behavior doesn't disappear just because resolution increases. Once we move online at 1080, the gap opens up a little bit. Average FPS only improves by about 2.7%, but the lows tell a different story. The 1% lows improve by over 6%, but the 0.1% lows jump up by nearly 15%, which makes a noticeable difference in how the game feels during actual raids. Online play stresses the system's memory far more, and server data and player movement kind of help to expose the RAM limits a little more than offline mode does. In 1440 online, this pattern holds. Average FPS still only improves by around 2.7%, but the 1% lows increase nearly 5% and the 0.1% lows stay over 10% higher on 64 gigs. In 4K online, where GPU load should be the highest, 64 gigs continues to show a meaningful advantage. Average FPS is about 2.7% higher, but the 0.1% lows are still over 10% better. This directly translates to more stable frame times and fewer severe drops during combat or movement. Moving on to the speed comparison, I used my 64 gigabyte kit at 6000 CL30 versus 5600 CL46. At 1080 offline, the RAM speed does make a bit of a difference. Jumping from 5600 to 6000 gives us a 6.7% increase in average FPS and in 
8% increase in 0.1% lows. So this tells us even on an X3D CPU where the memory speed usually doesn't make a big difference, Tarkov 1.0 can still be memory latency bound when the CPU isn't waiting on the GPU. In 1440 offline, the gains shrink slightly but remain pretty consistent. Average FPS is up nearly 6% and the 0.1% lows improve almost 9% with the faster RAM. In 4K offline, we're still very CPU and memory bound and the differences seem to hold here. About 6% higher averages and 7% better 0.1% lows. Tarkov is just a heavily CPU bound game. Once we go online in 1080, the story changes a bit though. Things get tightened up a bit more, and average FPS only improves by about 1.8% and the gains in the lows shrink to under 4%. This kind of suggests that online play introduces new bottlenecks that reduce the impact of raw memory speed. In 1440 online, faster RAM continues to help slightly, but the gains are a little bit inconsistent. The 1% lows improve around 3.6%, but the 0.1% lows barely move indicating that the worst case drops are no longer memory limited. In 4K online, the RAM speed effectively stops mattering. Average FPS is only up 1.8% and 0.1% lows are identical between 5200 and 6000. Given the insane prices of RAM these days, I think these results might make a difference for some people in their decision making process. So let's talk value because all these numbers are interesting, but what actually matters when you're spending your hard earned cash in 2026? Going from 32 to 64 gigs comes with a pretty hefty price jump. I went on to PC Part Picker and found the lowest price 5600 CL46 64GB kit and it came out to $508. For a 6000CL30 kit, the lowest price was $670. For a 32GB kit, the lowest price for a 5600CL46 was $261 and 6000 CL30 kit was 330. Going from a slower to a faster RAM kit at 32 gigs is going to be around a $70 difference and a 64 gigabyte kit the difference is about 160 bucks. Going from 32 to 64 gigs in the best case scenario using the lower speeds is around 250 bucks. If you're going for a 6000 CL30 kit it can be around $340. In terms of FPS averages and lows the difference is pretty small, within 5% across the board and most people wouldn't even notice that in normal gameplay and it's probably within margin of error to be honest. But where capacity really shines is in the 0.1% lows. We saw 10 to 14% improvement there and that translates directly into better frame time stability, fewer sudden dips and smoother overall gameplay. If you've ever felt those tiny stutters in Tarkov during a raid and you're on 32 gigs, that's where that extra memory helps smooth things out. So while the average numbers don't jump off the chart, the worst case scenarios get a big upgrade. And for a game like Tarkov, I think that matters a lot. Now what about faster RAM? Moving from 5600 to 6000 costs about 70 bucks on a 32 gigabyte kit in the best case scenario I found, and about 160 bucks in the best case scenario for a 64 gigabyte kit. Looking at the numbers, the differences are pretty small. We're talking 1 to 4% at most across average FPS, 1% lows, and 0.1% lows. Again, that's basically within margin of error for testing, and in practice, it's really hard to tell the difference while playing. So while the numbers did tick up slightly on paper, that cost per performance ratio is pretty poor, and you're paying a premium for gains that you're probably not going to notice in real gameplay. If it were me, I'd spend that difference on something that directly affects my experience, like a better mouse, better keyboard, a monitor upgrade, or just pocket that extra cash. So to sum it all up, if you want smoother gameplay and fewer severe dips, more memory is worth it. The difference in 0.1% lows show why 64 gigabytes is ideal for Tarkov 1.0. If you're trying to decide if you should spend more on slightly faster RAM on the other hand, personally I wouldn't bother because the gains are almost negligible and to me that money is better spent elsewhere or is better off just staying in your pocket. So for 2026 where RAM prices are just bonkers thanks to AI companies gobbling up all the memory out there leaving scraps for us consumers, I'd focus on capacity first if you want the most tangible benefit and I wouldn't stress over squeezing out 
a couple extra percent from faster modules. All right, guys, that's all I've got for this one. I really hope it was helpful for you guys trying to decide on upgrades or builds. If it was, please consider using the affiliate links down below to make your purchases as it really does help support the channel and helps me to continue bringing you comparisons like this. And if not, no problem. I just appreciate you being here and checking out my video. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.